Hello, everyone, and welcome to your next episode of Mejita Talks. I'm your host, Sherry Altergott, the Chief Experience Officer at the CX Edge. Well, I could not think of a better way to kick off 2023 than with our guest today, Mr. John Paxton, CEO of MHI. Welcome, John. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you for joining us. This is our first, we're entering our fourth year of the Mejita Talks podcast. Um, and we're starting the year off with the bang. I'm very excited to get into it and talk a little bit about MHI and especially ProMat coming up this year. Um, I think I've attended every ProMat for the last 20 years, um, with the exception of the ones that have been <laughs> put off due to COVID. Um, but I was hoping maybe first we could start off just so our guests can get to let, get to know you a little bit better. Could you give me a little bit more information about MHI? And then also how you got started in the material handling space. Sure. Yeah. So MHI is an association, a trade association that represents the manufacturers, uh, the consultants, the software providers, the integrators, and really all the solution providers for material handling equipment. So if you think about any product that goes into that space, uh, those are our members, the manufacturers and the providers of those products. We also have a division called WERC, W-E-R-C, which is the Warehouse Education Research Council, and that represents the practitioners in our industry, the people who are actually using the products, who are running the warehouse and distribution and fulfillment centers. So we have the combination of both of those within the MHI umbrella. And as uh, I got into the industry, I started out straight out of school and joined an overhead crane company, uh, DMAG Overhead Cranes, and through uh, the years, many years, I uh, moved into the leadership role and, and basically managing and leading their North American business. And through that time, we became members or we were members of MHI. And I always say, if you, if you volunteer for something, you get involved. And then if you do a good job at it, they ask you to volunteer for something else. And, uh, and through that process of volunteering, I led several of the industry vertical groups, the crane group, the hoist group, and and the monorail group within MHI, but then moved on uh, to the MHI board. I was asked to join the MHI board and went through the executive chairs of the board. So when the opportunity came up where George Press, the CEO of MHI uh, announced he was retiring, well, then it was a perfect fit. I put my hand up for that uh, opportunity because I came with the industry experience and, and the experience of being a volunteer and seeing the value that a trade association offers. So that's how I got here. That's such a great story. And I love the example of kind of volunteering leads to other things. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I think we volunteer to give our time, but there's also a personal benefit to a lot of those things through the people we meet and the experiences we have. Um, so that's very cool. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so I said, I'm so excited to attend ProMath this year, coming up March 20th. For people that may be new to the industry, could you explain a little bit about the advantages of attending ProMath this year? Yeah, so it's, uh, can you imagine it's, it's been, uh, this will be four years since the last ProMath back in 2019. So uh, COVID put a little bit of pause in, uh, in the show uh, area, but but uh, ProMat is, uh, is a place where you'll see the entire industry on display. So you'll see 560,000 feet of exhibits, you'll see 1,000 exhibitors, and you'll see over 40,000 attendees. And they come together, uh, the suppliers show their equipment and their solutions, and the attendees come to learn about what's new, the new technologies, make the network connections within the industry, and ultimately uh, look for ways to improve their business. So it's the industry is on display and the title of this year or the, or the tagline for this year is uh, touch the future. And at a live trade show, the idea is you can see the products, you can touch the products, they'll be in action and you can see all the technologies that'll lead to the future developments within our industry. Wow. And I, I can attest to when I started in the industry, ProMet for me 
was such a great resource just to learn and to to get information. And then as I matured in the industry and became more senior roles in my company, I continued to learn and gain additional information. So I always tell people, Promat, you know, if you're in the material ha handling industry, it's for all levels of people, whether you've been at your company for 30 years or whether you're brand new to the industry, because there's so many different components. And every year that I went, I would still walk away with a lot of new knowledge. So I don't think it really matters where you are in your career to get advantages of attending ProMat. Yeah, whether you're looking for the products or you're, or the, we have 150 educational sessions and multiple uh, networking sessions. So whether you're looking to network, whether you're looking to learn, whether you're looking to see the products in action, it's all there. Yeah, and I would say for me, the networking sessions have always been tremendous and as, long, as well as the seminars throughout the days. But what are some of the things that you're looking forward the most to in March? Yeah, when, when you open the doors, uh, and we saw this at Bodex, our, our show that we held uh, uh, during 2022, when you open the doors and the excitement of, of the people coming in, the people getting together, and the excitement, the the exhibitors are so excited, the people in the booth to show what's new, to show their products. And then the attendees that come in are so excited to learn. And, and you see that energy when they get together. It's kind of, it's really like magic. When they come together, uh, the energy of the excitement, here's the greatest products we have, and, uh, and here's the, the solutions for you, and I'm here to learn about the technologies. That's what's really exciting, is that interaction, that personal interaction. And for me, the other part is, uh, is I love the technology piece. And if you see each year, I'm always amazed and I'm very close to the industry, but I'm always amazed every year to see how the technologies change and what's new. And if over the past five or six years, the evolution of technology in our space has really accelerated. And that's the, the two pieces, the people together and the, see the cool technologies. Yeah, it really has been a tremendous growth period for material handling. I, I remember one of the first promats I went to, um, I don't know if there were any robotics or if there were, it was very few. It was a lot of rack forklifts and conveyor. And to mm -hmm. see over that 20 year span, how now there's such a huge focus on automation is really a testament to how far the industry has come for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I mean, the automation piece and then the connecting of the automation and the, and the digital and digitization and the, and the transparency now in the supply chain. It's, you know, it started with racks and forklifts, then you had robots, and then the robots learn how to see and think, so to speak, with, uh, with machine learning and vision systems. And then now you can connect the robots together and connect all the data together to really build this end-to-end -end supply chain. That's where the, the magic has happened. All these pieces are coming together and now they're connecting. It's really amazing. It's amazing to think about where it could go in the next 20 years, if you look at how far we've come. Um, so going back to Promo a little bit, I said I love the sessions, I love the networking, but another thing I always really look forward to are the keynote speakers. Um, I've had the opportunity to see some really high level speakers that you guys have gotten over the years. Um, and I always look forward to seeing what the lineup is. So can you tell me a little bit about the keynotes at Promet this year and what they'll be speaking on? Sure. Yeah, we have we have four keynotes. Uh, we're going to kick off on Monday with a keynote panel uh, of women leaders in supply chain. And this will be led by Michelle Dilley, who's the uh, CEO of a, a community uh, called Awesome. And what that community is, it's 1,500 leaders, women leaders in supply chain. So there's going to be a panel talking about their experiences and how they've learned and how they've developed in their careers in the supply chain. And then on Tuesday, we're really excited. We have Chef Jose Andreas, who is the uh, founder of the World Central Kitchen. And if you haven't seen or heard the story about uh, Chef Jose, uh, what he's built from a humanitarian aspect and how he has rallied chefs all around the world to come together to provide help to, for people in need. It's really an amazing story. And it's also an amazing logistical story. 
how do you come in right after a natural disaster? And for example, in Fort Myers, when uh, Hurricane Ian went through, how do you come in and serve 900,000 meals to the people in need? And uh, right now, uh, Chef Jose is, is, you've seen him maybe in the headlines uh, working in Ukraine, and they've served 195 million, that's million meals to the people in need in Ukraine. So it's a phenomenal story from how you take your passion and, and how you build that into a support network and how you really can make a huge impact from a humanitarian and also logistics aspect is really amazing. So that's, uh, that's Tuesday. And then Wednesday, uh, we'll have um, uh, Ron Howard, who Ron Howard is, uh, many of you, if you're, if you're the older generation, might know him as Opie in the Andy Griffith Show or Richie Cunningham in Happy Days. But what he's known for most recently is he's moved from childhood actor to Academy Award winning director. And Ron Howard has directed Apollo, Apollo 13. He's, he's directed uh, The Da Vinci Code, A Beautiful Mind, just to name a few. Uh, but he'll talk about how his career has developed and how he's applied innovation to the things he be, he's been doing and also giving back from a mentorship perspective. So that'll be really interesting. Um, and then one other part, uh, the unique connection is Ron Howard did a documentary called We Feed People, and his documentary was on Jose Andreas from the World Central Kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we have that connection between the two of them. So it's really going to be a, a top-notch uh, keynote session, and, and I'd say don't miss those. Yeah, I, I'm very excited. I can't wait to see Chef Jose and the other speakers sound fantastic. Uh, you guys always do such a great job at putting together a really valuable lineup. So don't miss that. And all those events are free of charge, correct? That's correct. Yes, that's correct. And then uh, and then there's one other keynote that we'll have Wednesday morning, which is the uh, unveiling of the 2023 MHI Annual Industry Report. And what that is, is our annual report where we survey over a thousand supply chain professionals and they provide input on how they see technology being adopted, where the future lies in the technology, and also the key trends affecting our industry going forward. So I will, uh, along with Deloitte, lead the panel that uh, discusses the results of that report, and the panelists will be professionals from the industry who will give their, uh, their input and guidance and, and basically their firsthand experience and uh, as it relates to the, what they're seeing in the report and how they've been using the technologies in their business. And it's a fantastic report. I, I can tell you personally, I've used that um, for strategic planning for previous companies I work for, and I use it today for clients that I have, and we reflect back to that report to help plan their business needs for the next year. So um, it's a tremendous report, and I hope people don't miss that as well with all the other exciting things going on. <laughs> there's, so there's a lot to do. You, <laughs> yes, there's a lot yeah. to do. You have to plan your time wisely. I learned that years ago is wear comfortable shoes and plan your time wisely. Um, you know, one of the things that I always look to for, for Promat and Modex is MHI has a tendency to continue to create and continue to make the events more valuable. Um, this year, I saw you have something called the Startup Pavilion, um, which I believe is new. I was hoping you could explain a little bit what that new feature is this year. Yes, yeah, so the Startup Pavilion, when, um, when we talk to the attendees and get feedback from the attendees, one of the top reasons they come to the shows is to find out what's new. What are the new technologies? What are the future technologies look like? So the idea and the concept is how do we help small companies who might not have on a big, uh, a big display or a big exhibit, how do we help them get their first step into the industry and to be on the platform with all the other exhibitors so that they can show the new products that they have as a startup company. So we have, uh, we built the, what's called the startup pavilion. And that's an area where attendees can go to see really what's new, what's cutting edge. And these are ideas that are just being introduced to the industry. 
And I can say as, as an example, we have member companies that when they first started engaging with MHI, they had two or three people in their company, just a startup, just building an idea. Maybe it was a robotic solution or, or an automatic guided ro uh, mobile robot solution. And then those have since built over the years into really interesting solutions and interesting companies. So the, so the thought is, how do we give them that first step into the industry? And that's what the Startup Pavilion is. That's exciting. We'll definitely have to check that out. Um, we talked a little bit about it. You had mentioned networking at Promat, and that's something that has given me a tremendous amount of value. For people that aren't sure what we mean by networking or what opportunities there are to really network, can you give a little bit of insight into how you can meet new people at Promat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every day at Promat, uh, we have networking opportunities, and it's a chance for different people to get together and to sh we look at it as how do we build these communities of like people, like meaning like interest or similar interests. So for example, Sunday night, we kick off with an international dinner. So that's open to international exhibitors, but also to international attendees. So to welcome them to build the international community and have an area that they can come together and meet each other. That's one example. And then on Monday, we have women in supply chain event. So women leaders in supply chain, all women in the supply chain are welcome to that event. And we do programming specifically uh, as it relates to building leaders within our industry. On the Monday evening, we have the Young Professionals Network. And we always say young at heart. Uh, generally, it's 40 or less, but I would say it's more new people to the industry younger professionals, people looking to make those connections. That's a happy hour that happens right after the show. And it's the idea for these newer people to, to get together. Uh, Tuesday, we have Work Connects. So Work Connects is the Warehouse Education Research Council. They bring together the practitioners and they provide programming for the practitioners. We have student days. Uh, for students to come and they, they uh, are able to tour the show floor, but also build connections with the students and with the professors and the companies who could be hiring those students in the future. We have a marketing professionals community uh, that meets on uh, Wednesday morning, and that's like-minded marketing professionals that come together and share ideas as far as how to continue to build out marketing. And I guess we, we top it off with industry night, on Wednesday, Wednesday night, and that is where uh, you can come together and we will launch our, uh, announce our innovation award winners. So, so that'll be a key part of it. We have a $30,000 trip of a lifetime, which is also really interesting. If you attend, you're, you're eligible for that prize. And we will have comedian Nate Bergazzi, who is the, uh, known as the Tennessee Kid, and we'll have an entertainment from, uh, entertainment uh, session with him. Uh, just to kick back and have some fun. So plenty of opportunities to network and to, to build connections and to be with people who have similar interests to you. Yeah, and that that's always a really fun night with the comedian and the awards and some nice decompression. So i um, looking forward to all the networking that's going to happen for sure. Uh, we said that this is the first year back. I know for Promat, it would have been 2021. For the first time, you guys had to go completely remote. It just wasn't an environment in which to bring that many people back together. And now we're back, and I think you're back really bigger than ever uh, in Chicago. But do you think that the pandemic itself will have an everlasting effect on trade shows in general? Yes, I do. And, and I would say an everlasting positive effect. And uh, if, if I went uh, back a couple of years before, before the word COVID was even known, I, I, you know, we would have discussions, you know, what if trade shows went away? What if everything was done online? What if all the technology, you could just do it and never had to leave your house or leave, leave your office? And, uh, and we had those discussions and uh, we really didn't expect that COVID would come along and actually shut down, you know, uh, exhibitions worldwide, yeah, everywhere in the world, there was no meetings of any kind. Um, but through that, through the course of that time, what we found is um, 
people really had a desire to be together. They had a desire to see and touch the products. I mean, you can look at videos, you can look at websites, but to go and engage with people and see the products, it was almost like not doing it for, for a period of two years left such a void that when uh, COVID was in, uh, behind us, people came out even stronger. So we had our Modex show uh, in 2022 and attendance was off the charts and people came out and they really were excited to be together. And we're seeing that across the board with all shows, not just in our space, not just our shows, but pretty much anybody who's displaying equipment, who's displaying solutions and has this networking component, people are coming to that. Um, and then another thought along those lines is the days of every Monday morning getting on an airplane and flying somewhere, uh, those days might be behind us. And we find that people are valuing their time, valuing where they go and what a better place to go when you can see everything in one place. So you don't have to fly all around to different suppliers or different customers. You can see it all at one place. So it's a unique, uh, uh, I think it actually, uh, my belief is that COVID strengthened trade shows and built them even further and showed the value of those. So that's what we're seeing. Uh, our shows are bigger, dimensionally bigger. The attendance is dimensionally bigger. The investments are larger and the people are coming to be in person. Yeah, and I think that's such a great point. I definitely have seen that over 2022, the conferences that I attended, people were just seemingly more excited to be there maybe than they had in previous years because you don't realize how much you miss something until it's gone, yeah, right? So I think, it, I think that's a really great point. Now, I want to take advantage of having you here with me today because it's a question that I get a lot when I'm talking to um, people in the industry about Promat versus Modex because mm -hmm. I'm a big encourager of make, if it's the year of Promat, go to Promat. If it's the year of Modex, go to Modex. Mm -hmm. um, but I find myself struggling to explain the difference between the two shows other than the name and the location. Yep. Yes. So if you if you kind of think about the two shows, there definitely is, is overlap in the two shows and, and it's purposeful overlap. But Promat originally, as it as it developed, uh, if you think about the focus of inside the four walls, so all the equipment and solutions that are inside distribution centers, inside of warehousing systems, um, or warehouse, warehouses, inside of uh, of manufacturing facilities, that's the focus of Promat. And when we um, built Modex out, we brought the Promat component to Modex. That's where it looks somewhat familiar. But on, in addition to that, we added the external perspective. So the mode, Modex, actually mode is mode of transportation, uh, and it brings out the broader supply chain. So many companies now, it's not just about what happens in the four walls, but it's also uh, how do I connect with my customers? Last mile delivery, transportation, logistics, all those pieces that happen outside in transparency and, and security of your supply chain. That's where Modex brings in that component. So take the uh, inside the four walls and for Modex, draw a bigger circle around it and, and capture all the technologies that take place outside the four walls in addition. That's kind of how we explain it and how we envision it and how we continue to build it. Fantastic. Now I have a much better answer than my previous <laughs> answer was to that question. Um, how can people get more involved with an organization like MHI throughout the year other than just mm -hmm. attending a trade show? Yeah, so MHI has two, uh, two ways to get involved. If you're a manufacturer, or as I mentioned in the beginning, a manufacturer, uh, a supplier of solutions, a, a consultant, an integrator, uh, those you can join MHI. And on our, our website, uh, it's mhi.org, and, and it says about, a backslash about, backslash join, you can find out about the value that MHI offers outside of the trade show. So those, that's one area for members to join. And in that, you'll find that we have 18 industry vertical groups. So if you're involved in specific product technologies, uh, we, 
write the standards for those industries. We bring those specific groups together. We have these networking uh, connections and communities that I mentioned earlier. They happen all year long, not just at the show. Uh, and then we have unique knowledge opportunities. So if you want to share your knowledge or, or learn from MHI, there's ways to connect with that on our website. And if you're not in that particular category, per, perhaps you're a practitioner working in the warehouse or distribution space, there's the opportunity to join WORK, the Warehouse Education Research Council at werc.org. And there you can find tools and systems and, and knowledge components to help you better run your business from a warehouse and distribution space. So we have the full umbrella so people can engage in many different places. I encourage you to go to, uh, well, here's uh, three encouragements. One, go to mhi.org and look around. Uh, go to werc.org. And then for all the Promat Show information, uh, promatshow.com is where you will see all the information about exhibitors and keynotes and the times and uh, and the, where all the communities are and the networking opportunities. You'll see all that on the trade show website, promatshow.com. Fantastic. Well, John, you have made it to our first lightning round of 2023. Are you ready to enter into the lightning round? I'm ready. Yeah. All Bring right. it on. So Bring I mean, it's, a new, it's a new year, so I had to switch it up a little bit, but it's still the same format. So I have 10 questions I'm going to ask you. I tried to make them as easy as possible. You're just going to tell me the first word that, or the first thoughts that come to your mind when you hear the question. Um, and this is just a little game we like to play just so we get to know our speakers better and it brings the Mahina community together a little bit better. So I always like to start off pretty easy. Um, the first one is, do you prefer dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Uh, milk chocolate. Would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great, great grandchildren. I'd rather go into the future. Are you good at pickleball? Uh, I'm working on it. I've been practicing, so not super good, but we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I just got into it. It is fun. Um, would you rather have x ray vision or magnified hearing? I think x-ray vision. When you go to an online store, do you tend to sort by price or by rating? Uh, ratings. If everyone in the world had to get married when they reached a certain age, what would that age be? 35. What's your ideal temperature outside? About 70. Do you like hot coffee or iced coffee? Hot coffee. Several times a day. Give me, <laughs> give me one thing on your bucket list. One thing on my bucket list. Uh, I think... Uh, Traveling uh, with with my family to to places that we have not been before, so so they we've been to several places, but there's still plenty more to take my family to. It's a big world, and then finally, what is your biggest guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. Um, I don't know if I call it a guilty pleasure, but. Uh, but I continue uh, to continue to play ice hockey every Sunday, and uh, and I and I just wonder how long I'll continue to do that. But uh, <laughs> but it's a it's a pleasure, it's an enjoyment, it's it's a great time, and I just keep on doing it every year. So that's all. I say you keep doing whatever brings you joy until you can no longer do it for sure. Yeah. Well, John, you made it through our first lightning wow. round of 2023 with flying colors. Thank you for that. And thank you so much for being our guest today. I certainly learned some new things about Promat and MHI. I look forward to attending the show in March. 
Um, do you have any parting words you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, I think 2023 is shaping up to be a great year and uh, a great year from uh, from the whole supply chain. Uh, one one uh, a comment that I heard is, wouldn't it be great to have normal business normal cycles business again? Life. So, so that's uh, something that we're looking for, looking forward to. But I, I think it's exciting times in our industry. The technology keeps advancing. It's really, it's really great times in our industry. So that's that's exciting. Well, thank you, John, and thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, we'll see you in March. This has right, been Mejita Talks with your host Sherry Altergat. Well, thank you. We'll see you.